All right. All right, good morning. How are y'all doing? It's hot outside and it's hot inside here. Does it feel good? It's <laughs> hot. All right, Matthew chapter 13 is where we are. Wow, we turn one page. Matthew 13, 33. Do what? <laughs> Matthew 13, 33, the first syllable of the first word. <laughs> We're going to, let's. <laughs> All right, Matthew 13, 33. <laughs> yeah, that's right, she was. All right, the Bible says, another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. All right, this, this parable shows up in Luke, and there's not really any explanation given. And, and I'll tell you, the way I'm, we're going to learn a little bit about leaven this morning, and what the Bible says about it, typically, typically, um, it seems to have like a negative connotation, generally, you know, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump, and that's used in a negative connotation. Um, but, but, that's not necessarily true of the Bible, that leaven is a bad thing. It's just, it's not a poison. It doesn't poison bread. Um, and I think when you say, make that general statement, well, it's always bad in the Bible, that you don't know much about the Old Testament, or you don't know why things are said the way they're said in the Bible. So here, here's, the, here's the comparison. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. The kingdom of heaven is, is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, so first off, first off, it's, it's not like poison. It's not a bad thing. Look over in Luke. Luke chapter 13 and verse 20. Here's, here it is again. Luke 13, 20. And I'm, I'm sure this would be a little bit different than the way we've all kind of come to understand this. Luke chapter 13, verse 20. And, and here's, here's kind of why I went down this road. Uh, Luke 13, 20 says, Again, he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. And that's all that's said. So, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, they, are, they themselves are like leaven. All right? The kingdom of God... Kingdom of heaven, either one, neither of them are bad things. In fact, the kingdom of God is specifically, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So here's where I'm going with this, because I know it's, it's, it's not the way, the way we've always kind of come to understand this thing. The kingdom of God is not poison, it's not bad. It's not corrupt in any way. But Jesus Christ said the kingdom of God is like leaven. So before we jump off and say, well, leaven, leaven is always a terrible thing in the Bible. Well, the kingdom of God is not a bad thing. The kingdom of heaven is not a bad thing. And that's what he's likening them, he's likening them, to, them to, to leaven. So let's go in the Old Testament and see about this leaven, and maybe we can learn something about it. The, the, the action and, and the way it's being likened here, this woman takes and hides. So the leaven is a hidden thing. That's the point. It's a hidden thing. It's below the surface. You can't see the leaven when it does its work. You can't, you can't see it. And that's the, that's the idea. All right, go back to Genesis 19. We'll 
I'll show you a couple of places in the Old Testament. This is the first place unleavened bread shows up. And before we, again, before we jump on the leaven is, is always bad in the Bible, we, let's actually read the Bible. Genesis 19, verse 1. Here's the first time unleavened bread shows up. It says, and there came two angels, Genesis 19, 1. There came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat at the, in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. You shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. So, I mean, he's, no, no, you got to stay, you got to stay. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. All right, unleavened bread here doesn't have a bad connotation or evil, it's not wicked. The only reason Lot makes unleavened bread here is because leaven, the leavening process, takes time. And Lot doesn't have time. So he just makes bread without, he just makes unleavened bread. So the first time the unleavened bread shows up, here it is. It's not corrupt, it's not evil, it's just the time element is the issue. He doesn't have time, so he just makes unleavened bread. All right, that's, that's the first time. Now, look over in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. It says, And thus shall ye eat. This is, this is the Passover night. This is the night um, Israel is this, pa- participating in the Passover, or the Lord's going to, I should say, pass over. And if there's blood on the doorpost, then... Uh, the curse doesn't enter into the house uh, to kill the firstborn, but if there's no blood, then, or if there is blood, then the Lord just passes over the house. And it's, it's, a, it's a quick, quick night. They've got to eat in a hurry, and, and they've got to get out of there. Exodus twelve eleven. Thus shall ye eat with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. There you go. There's another time element deal here where you just got to eat and get out of here. This is why they eat bitter herbs. They call it bitter herbs and stuff. They don't have any seasoning because there's just no time. It's just throw together something, eat it, and get out. For verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses, for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. This is going to be called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All right, just, just a note here, <clears throat> and uh, we'll deal with a little bit more of it in a minute, but just a note here. If they're getting rid of the leaven for seven days, that means they have leaven. It means leaven's not, not evil, they're... they're used to cooking with it. It's a normal thing. But for seven days after the Passover, they're going to get rid of it. And there's a reason they're going to get rid of it, because they're leaving Egypt, and they're not taking Egypt with them. That's, that's God's prescription. I want you to get out of Egypt, and you're not taking Egypt with you. And if you know anything about leaven and, you know, leaven the bread and and you got a mother there, and then this dough with got the leaven in it, and you take a little bit and leaven another piece of dough, and you just keep doing this for years and years and years and years. So you take this old leaven, 
and this old leavened lump, and you just keep leavening bread for years and years and years, or decades and decades, and it just lasts forever. And the Lord says, no, you're, you're, not, you're not taking Egypt. When you leave Egypt, you're not taking Egypt with you. So this is, this is the point of the whole feast of unleavened bread is you're getting rid of things that are Egyptian, get them out of your house, get them away from you, and you're starting new. You're going to start over. All right, so this, that's the spiritual significance of it. In fact, in fact, 1 Corinthians, look in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. He'll explain it. Paul will explain it. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. This is where we kind of, I guess, assume leaven, leaven is always evil. It's always corrupt. It's not necessarily always corrupt. It's, it's, there's some places where they're told not to have leavened bread. But leaven's not poison, and the kingdom of God is not evil, and the kingdom of heaven is not evil. They're not evil things. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out, therefore... The old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. That's, that's a reference to what you just read in Exodus. Get rid of the old, you're starting new now. Get rid of all the old stuff, I'm getting you out of Egypt, and you're not taking Egypt with you. That makes sense? I mean, you're leaving Egypt, and you're not taking Egypt with you. That's the significance of the unleavened bread. That's the significance of it. All right? And Paul makes the reference to Jesus Christ as the Passover, and there, there's the significance. You're new. You're, 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 you're redeemed out of the world, and we're not taking the world with us now. Okay? So that's the significance of this Feast of Unleavened Bread. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean leaven was forbidden in Israel, because that's not true. It wasn't. It was forbidden for a week when they had the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but everybody's used to baking with leaven. Everybody, leaven doesn't, doesn't make the food taste bad. It makes it better. It makes it fluffy. It makes it, I mean, it, it, gives, it, it gives it texture and things like that. So to, to just kind of wipe the whole slate clean and say, well, okay, on this parable, it just means, you know, the kingdom of God is, is a corrupt thing or the kingdom of heaven is a corrupt thing. That's not true. It's never corrupt. So to say the kingdom of God is like leaven, he must, he must be saying something else. Not that these things are all corrupt all the time. All right? Here's, uh, here's one. Look in Leviticus chapter 23. Here's where leaven is prescribed. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 15. Leviticus 23.15. The, the point in the parable was this. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. The kingdom of God is like leaven. The kingdom of God is not like poison. The kingdom of heaven is not like poison. The kingdom of God is not corrupt, and the kingdom of heaven is not corrupt. That's not, that's not the point of the parable. The point of the parable is it's like leaven that's taken and hidden somewhere. It's out of sight, but it's going to do some work, and it's going to do some work out of sight. All right, Leviticus 23. Here's, here's another Old Testament reference. Just so we can get a more rounded picture, a more balanced picture, instead of just wiping the whole thing, well, leaven's always terrible in the Bible, so this parable obviously means the kingdom of God is a terrible thing, and the kingdom of heaven is going to be a corrupt thing, and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's not it. Here's where leaven is prescribed. Leviticus 23, 15. You shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. That's seven weeks, 49 days. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. All right? Here's, here's the process real quick before we read on. Passover is the, is the mark of the new year for Israel. That's the new year. When they get into the land in the new year, they plant their fields. Seven weeks later, God's going to prescribe a harvest. 
and a thanks offering from what was first planted when they got into their, their new land. So seven weeks later, this is it. This is Pentecost. It would be called, it'd be called Pentecost. You understand it as Pentecost in the New Testament. Verse 17. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Wait a minute, but I thought leaven was a horrible thing and all that. It's not. It's not evil. This, the point of this is, and the point of the Exodus was, in Exodus, here's Passover, here's Israel leaving Egypt, and God saying, you're leaving, I'm redeeming you out of the world, now don't take the world with you. Get out of it and leave it all behind. And when you get to this new place you're going, you plant your fields And then seven weeks later, you're going to have a harvest or or I'm instituting a a first fruits offering. So after seven weeks, you've got got the first crop that comes up. You're going to take of that crop. You're going to show up at the tabernacle and you're going to offer a thanks offering to God. And you're going to have leavened bread and you're going to have fruits that have grown in the field that you've sown and all this stuff. And he says it's going to be a new offering. This is, this is a new thing. That's what, what he says there in, uh, uh, where is it, verse 16. It's an, this is an offer a new, new meat offering. And this has leaven in it and all that kind of stuff. So, again, leaven's not evil in the Bible. Leaven's good. It's fine. Oftentimes the work of it can be uh, um, described as a thorough process. So even when he talks about evil cr- communications, corrupt good mo- manners, all that kind of stuff, or little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yeah, it's very thorough and all that stuff. But to again, to just wipe with a broad brush and say, okay, this parable is about how corrupt the kingdom of God is or how corrupt the kingdom of heaven is, that's not true. Because it's not. The kingdom of God is not corrupt. The kingdom of heaven is not corrupt. Those are good things. So leaven, here's, here's this time it's used and it's prescribed. God says, take, take your bread, take your leavened bread. You're going to offer it up. It's going to be an offering. And the point of it is you've now planted in your, in your land. You planted seven weeks later. Now, here's a time where you're going to bring of that first harvest and you're going to offer to me that first harvest. So it's, it's just an agricultural thing, but I mean, it's offering back to God, but it just kind of works on the agricultural process when, when Israel gets in the land. So now you and I would know it as this, the spiritual or the application to Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ is going to be crucified on Passover. He gets crucified on Passover and then 50 days later, you have the feast of, of, of the harvest, the first fruits. That's Pentecost. And that's where new, when Jesus Christ tells the disciples, he says, wait for me, and then I'm going to come, and the Holy Spirit's going to come, I'm going to pour out the Holy Spirit. And so the fruits begin to be born after Pentecost, and now it's just, I mean, it's just like the agricultural cycle that Israel's given. Go in your land, plant your seed at the beginning of the year, seven weeks later, I'm going to prescribe a, a feast to celebrate the first fruits that come out of that first harvest. And that's, that's what it is. And so, back to Leviticus, it's, again, 11, 11 isn't an evil thing here. It's prescribed in this particular, um, uh, this particular feast, Pentecost. So let's go back to Matthew 13, and let's read this again with a little bit of context here. Matthew 13, 33. And I, I think because there's not very much explanation about this, uh, and the disciples seem to understand clearly what he's saying, um, you got really two verses that have this parable, and that's, that's about it. Now he says this, Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, that doesn't mean the kingdom of heaven is evil. Doesn't mean the. Right. And here's how it's like it right here. 
here's how it's like. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. All right, the kingdom of heaven isn't corrupt. The kingdom of God, you know, is never corrupt. So it can't, it can't be corrupting. That can't be what it's talking about. That it's a corrupting process in the kingdom of God. It's not. It never is. You just read in 1 Corinthians 15, the kingdom of God is incorruptible, right? It's, it's incorruptible, all right? Now, let's, let's see maybe an aspect of this that, it, that makes a little more sense. She takes the leaven, and the leaven itself is like the kingdom of God. The leaven itself is like the kingdom of heaven, and she hides it. Look over here in Luke 17. And verse 20. Luke 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. There you go. So the kingdom of God is like leaven, which a woman hid in three measures of meal. Okay. The kingdom of God comes not with observation. Verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. They shall say to you, see here, see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part of under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank. They married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed." So he's not revealed. It's not an observation. It's not something you can see. And when Jesus Christ says the kingdom of God's like leaven, the kingdom of heaven's like leaven, they're not corrupt things. They're unseen things. They're not visible. And once, once the work is, I guess the hidden work is done, and then what's revealed, I, I guess you, you could say, I don't, you could say it this way, once, once the leaven and and it's done with the dough, done with the bread. The bread's ready for the oven then. It's, it's, uh, it's fully leavened. So it's unseen. Here's another one. Here's another one. Look in uh, Matthew 24. Well, in these parables, they're the same. Right, in these parables, they're both likened to leaven. Right? Is that right? Yes, they're Right. Well, it's more than that. Well, I know, but I'm just saying. Right, but in this parable, it's the same. It's the same thing. But that's it. It's the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, mm -hmm. and the kingdom of God is like leaven. Just in the comparison of leaven. Right. In the comparison of leaven, it's the yes. same. Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Matthew 24, verse 36. says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So you got, 
you got a work of God going on that the world is largely just unaware of. They, they just don't even know what's happening until it's too late, until, until the, the judgment comes. They're just going about doing their business. Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Here's, here's the, the overall point of this. These kingdoms, are, they're unseen right now. Everything you and I have to do is by faith. You, you, can't, you can't see the rewards. You can't see the Spirit of God. You can't see any, any of that work right now. It's, it's unseen to you. So everything, everything that you and I are going to participate with God in, if you're going to participate with God in something, it's going to be done by faith because you can't see it. It's not something that's observable. Like he said over there in Luke uh, uh, 17, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. It's not something you can observe. Um, let's keep going here. So he says, verse 46, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So the man that was faithful... There was no visible reward to him until the Lord came back, and then you could see the visible rewards. There's nothing, there's nothing visible about it. But, verse 48, if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So some people, because they can't see what's going on, they can't see, they say, give me evidence, or, or, or they can't see, or, or they think they can. I mean, they can't see the, the, the work of God. They'll say, well, show me evidence, or I don't see anything happening here. And because that, they live their lives a certain way, and and a certain uh, maybe immoral way because they just don't see any, any reason not to. All right, in Matthew 25, after he says all this about the coming of the Lord and it's a surprise and all that stuff, he does a little parable about these ten virgins and says five were ready and five weren't. And, the, and it's real simple. The point, again, is some were ready and some were just not ready. And what made some ready is they were faithful and what made others ready is they just weren't faithful. All right, here's another one. Look in John chapter 3 and verse 3. I think we can make this thing so complicated and it's just not complicated. John chapter 3, verse 3. So what the lady does in the parable, in whichever parable you want to choose, Luke, Matthew, whichever one, she takes the, takes the leaven, which is like the kingdom of heaven, like the kingdom of God, and she hides it. So it's unseen. Here's what Jesus Christ says. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, anybody know who he's talking about here? This is Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There you go. You just can't see it. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So that explains it. Again, you all know this. It's not a baptism. It's a new birth. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. 
Here it is. Here's another example. The wind bloweth where it listeth, but canst not tell, or the, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. You can't see it. You can hear it. You may be able to see some effects of it, but you can't observe it. And, and so here's, here is the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ says to Nicodemus, look, you, you can't see this thing unless you're born again. You, you can't make observations on it. And so in a very, two ver- literally, <laughs> two verses in the Bible, you got this parable about leaven. There's no explanation given. It's, 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 you've, you've seen in the Old Testament where leaven's prescribed, where it's not prescribed, why it's prescribed, why it's not prescribed. You know the kingdom of God's not evil. You know the kingdom of heaven's not evil. So the aspect that he's likening leaven to is just the hidden aspect of it. She takes the leaven. She hides it until the whole thing's leavened, and then there you go. And then he moves on to another parable. So here's, here's a couple others. Colossians 1.26. Look in Colossians. That's why I, I, there's not much explanation given on it. It's pretty simple. Okay, Colossians. It could be. Well, he says, he says the kingdom, these kingdoms are, are just unseen. They're just not, you can't observe the actual kingdom right now. Like you couldn't. You couldn't go to Walmart and say, here's the kingdom of God thing, and here's something else. Well, I just want the kingdom of God thing. You can't observe it. You can't, you can't put your hands on it. So it's like wind. It's like uh, uh, it's just invisible. Colossians 1, 25. Paul says this. Wherefore, I am made a minister... According to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid, there's that word, from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So that you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The only connection you have to it right now is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the connection. The Spirit of God is the connection. You don't have have the tangible. You can't hold a piece of gold. You can't hold anything in this kingdom. We have the Spirit of God, and that's the connection you have to this this kingdom. All right, here's Colossians chapter 2. Look in verse 3. Here's the hidden thing again. It just means it's out of sight. It's just you can't see it. It's It's not corrupt. It's not evil. It's just out of sight. Uh, verse, verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's in Jesus Christ. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. There's that hidden word. That's the specific word that's used in the parable. She takes it and hides it somewhere. All right, here it is again. Colossians chapter 3. And verse, verse 1. We've covered this in Wednesday nights a few times. <laughs> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. How do you seek them? And you can't build a ladder to them. You're going to have to do it by faith. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you're dead. Your life is what? Hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, there's, there's the King of Kings there. Jesus Christ, King of Kings. That's where, that's where everything's hidden. It's out of sight. It's in Christ. When he appears, then the kingdom appears. Then you have all of the glory. You have all of that All of that. Showing up. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. There it is. It's, it's, it's a kingdom that is out of sight for the time being. 
You can, you can only access it by faith. There's, there, there's no way to tangibly hang on to it. It's like wind. You might be able to hear it. You might be able to see some effects of it. But it's, it's not something you can grab on to. And it's not something you can store. It's not something you can store up here. Not something you can put in your garage. None of that. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, either one. They're both like leaven. And, and as you've seen from the Old Testament... Uh, and you know Israel, it's not a, a forbidden thing in the nation of Israel. It's not for, leaven's not forbidden in the nation of Israel. For a week, for a week, unleavened bread is prescribed. And that's to commemorate leaving Egypt and saying, you're leaving the world and you're not taking the world with you. I'm redeeming you from Egypt and you're not taking Egypt with you. So leave all that stuff behind. Then you're going to plant new, new seed in, in a new land. And seven weeks later, you're going to offer a first fruits offering, Pentecost. And you're going to offer that to the Lord. It will be the first fruits that have been harvested in that land. And that offering, you're going to bring leavened bread. So it's, it's not evil. It's not wicked. It's not terrible. Granted, there are some times where things are likened to it where it has a thorough, uh, uh, a thorough um, uh, it just it thoroughly deals with whatever, whatever it is, like he says, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Yeah, that, that's, it's thorough. It is thorough. Yeah. It, and it, yeah, in those cases, it, it, it is thorough. But in the parables, that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about a kingdom of God that is corrupt in the end. The kingdom of God is never corrupt. It's incorruptible. The kingdom of heaven is not corrupt. In fact, he casts out all the corrupt things out of kingdom of heaven. So it's not corrupt. So that's, that's not, and I, I realize this is a little different than probably we've all dealt with this and, and heard about it. But that's because we painted it with such a broad brush and said, well, leaven's always a bad thing in the Bible. And it's not always a bad thing. It's forbidden for a week in Israel because of the Passover and because of the Jews leaving Egypt. But it doesn't mean it's, all, it's evil or it's, it's a poison or it's a terrible thing. The element that he's likening it to is she takes the eleven and she hides it. And that's, that's, that's it. Takes eleven, hides it. And so from that point on, you've got, and not even from that point on, but the kingdom is, a, is, a, is an unseen, hidden thing right now. The only, the only access you have to the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, either one, whatever, the only access you have to God's kingdom, to Jesus Christ's kingdom, is through faith. That's it. That's it. And that's, uh, that's why when I read these things, that, that was the thing, really, and just to, uh, to, to explain a little bit here going back, because I understand it's a little different here to, to hear it this way. When you read the words, I, th I think we're, we'd all say, oh, yeah, I believe the Bible, I believe the Bible, I believe the Bible. When the Bible says the kingdom of God is like leaven, not like the process, it's not like the... It's not like the end result. It is like the leaven itself. That's what he says. That's what it's like. And then that leaven is taken and hidden somewhere. That's the parable. And it's not about corruption or any of that stuff. It's just hidden. And that's why you only literally have two verses in the Bible about this. So <laughs> there's not a whole lot of explanation when Jesus Christ asked the, the disciples after this, you understand all this? They say, yeah, we understand all of it. Except that one about the wheat and the tares. Tell us about that one. We don't understand that one. But all the rest of them, they understood. Now, under, and granted, granted, there are times in the New Testament where Jesus Christ will say, uh, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's true. That means their doctrine, he says, their doctrine is hypocrisy, where they, where they present something on the outside, but inwardly there's something else. It's, it's, again, it's, it's hidden. 
The problem with this parable, or not, not a problem, is the actual kingdom themselves are like leaven. The kingdoms themselves are like leaven. Not like the end result of the leaven, they're like the leaven themselves. So, and you know, again, the kingdoms aren't corrupt, they're not evil, they're not wicked, they're not poison, they're not bad. They're good. They're good things. So I think the principle is pretty simple. It's just hidden. It's just unseen. And unseen until it's time to be seen. So there you go. I mean, it's just two simple verses in the Bible. Go ahead, Shirley. Mm-hmm. Well, and that will be when the kingdoms are visible. I mean, that will be when, right, when Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, shows up, the, the kingdom is visible, it's, it's evident, and that's, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Right now, it's not evident. You can't see it. You can't observe it. You can't put your hand on it. You can't store it up anywhere. You just have access to it by faith. Go ahead, Alan. Exactly. And there was, Yeah. It, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is and all that stuff. So to make a big, you know, deal out of two verses in the Bible and two parables, yeah, I think it's a pretty simple thing. Um, you know, it's just, it's just the parable of the leaven, and I, it, I, get, and I, I don't see anywhere where the kingdom of God is, a, is an evil, poisonous thing or where the kingdom of heaven is an evil, poisonous thing. Go ahead. It's, yeah, it's just the process. You just put it in the dough and let it do its work. It's just, it's just unseen. It's not, it's not a, uh, uh, well, y'all get, you get the idea. I, I've, I've heard guys go so far as to say, well, since, since it's, she's hiding this because she's corrupting the bread. She's not corrupting the bread. It doesn't kill, it doesn't poison people. It doesn't hurt people. Leaven's fine. It's okay. And the kingdom of God is just, yeah, it's just hidden. It's just hidden. That's, that's, I don't know. That's why I think there's, only, there's not very much explanation about it because it's just kind of a simple thing. But All right. Well, let's pray and we will we'll get out of here. Father, I pray it's been helpful. There's, uh, I know this isn't the way we've all kind of learned this stuff, but I uh, pray it's a little more ba- balanced and uh, we can see actual verses in the Bible where if, that would help us interpret uh, these these kingdoms and the kingdoms we know we know they're not evil, so to say something like leaven is an evil thing is not necessarily true because the kingdoms aren't evil. Um, but I pray you'd help us, you'd feed us with these words and give us a better understanding. We we're Gentiles and we we don't have any idea what we're reading in the Old Testament. We just uh, put these systems together and try to figure things out and um, uh, we're not we're not Israel we didn't grow up in this stuff in this culture in a culture that honors the word of God or has any sort of a uh, things prescribed by the word of God but uh, I pray that you would help us get, get out of this what we need to get out of it and I pray this in Jesus name amen